on 17th of July 2014, more than five years ago. Since then, there has been a lengthy investigation by a joint investigation team led by the Netherlands, but so far no one has been brought to justice. Worse, in the last uh, few weeks, we see Mr. Semach, who was wanted, um, involved in a prisoner swap between Ukraine and Russia, for which he went to Russia and now seems to escape um, being put to trial or being held accountable by the, uh, by the International Tribunal, which is about to be set up in the Netherlands in, the, in March of next year. <coughs> we shouldn't forget that if 298 people are shot out of the sky, there cannot be justice if you do not investigate such a massacre. The political attention is fading, so I'm very happy to see quite a number of NGOs here. Not many are involved, so one of the things I hope is that a number of you will get involved. And um, um, we know we don't have many politicians in the room at the moment, but because we already foresaw that Macron likes talking for more than an hour, this was not unexpected. Um, we went and visited the political groups, so the people next to me have met more than 100 MPs in the Liberal group, the Social Democratic group, and the Christian Democratic group. Met the um, Commissioner, uh, Dunja Mijatovic. Um, so this is uh, a slightly different event than we had anticipated. To talk about their experience and to see how we can do something together. This morning we had um, the nomination of a rapporteur, that's Titus Corley from uh, Romania. He will start writing a report uh, on 2017. So I think I'm going to throw the first to, to you, Claudio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it's already a big comfort that people still want to listen to our story and hear what happened. So thank you very much. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Claudio Villaca. Uh, I'm a Swiss and Brazilian citizen. In the MX17, I lost my beloved partner, Glenn Thomas. Glenn was British, 49 years old. He was the spokesperson of the World Health Organization in Geneva. My partner was extremely appreciated as a professional, an ex-CNN, ex-BBC, ex-ITV, and for over 30 years, he was the tuberculosis communication officer before he became the World Health Organization spokesperson. He was heading to the HIV AIDS conference in Melbourne with five other experts. Upon his return to Geneva, we were going to celebrate his 50th birthday. But he never returned home. Instead, after almost waiting in distress for three months, I got his body so mutilated that I was requested not to look at it. A free fall from 10 kilometers and the explosion on a soil covered with sunflowers in a country I had never been before. His body lay on the fields under the summer heat for a few days, the ultimate cruelty before an authorization allowed them to be collected and sent to the Netherlands. I could not tell him goodbye or have a last look at his beautiful blue eyes or even learn how to become a widower. The psychiatrist that looks after me for the last five years diagnosed an emotional coma and a psychic death. I had to learn again how to function, wake up, wash, shave, go to work, believe in rules and respect them. All these without Glenn, without being able to hold him, as you are allowed to hold your loved ones. But I do not want to become a victim all my life. In spite of the natural fact that we all will die, I will not accept the idea that someone in an obscure chain of command triggered a missile that decimated the dreams, projects, and aspirations of 298 people and their families and friends. Sorry, wrong place at the wrong time. Even wars have rules. One decision changed my life. 
And I want to know who took this decision. To move forward is to move towards justice. And justice is a powerful healing. Both Ukraine and Russia are signatories of the Geneva Conventions and their additional protocols that agree not to attack civilians in an armed conflict. But in my head, I was back to Solferino, and I felt the frustration and the anger of history retrocession. What is the point in having treaties, organizations, institutions? The GAT has done a remarkable work to many degrees, and I never thought I would have lived within the harrowing plot of a real life, full scale, cold blooded murder mystery, except that this is not fiction. More and more details and evidence of where the missile came from, how it got there, and how it pulverized the MH17 is collected. And the GAT cannot unveil everything to keep some ammunition, the word sounds ironic, for the judgment, the trial. Even though a lot of this evidence points towards Russian citizens, Russia keeps denying vehemently any wrongdoing and trying to cover its track. Therefore, especially in memory of those 80 kids, they were not given a chance to taste the world. I appeal to the power you might have in your hands to help us. I'm powerless to deliver justice, but you are not. Please do not waste this power of making sure anyone can safely fly without being attacked by a missile. You know how to persuade countries to cooperate through diplomatic, political, and legal means, how to publicize atrocities, how to advise governments tempted to forget justice in the name of more palpable interests. And when you hold your beloved ones tonight, please remember us. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hal. My name is Hans de Borst. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm just an ordinary citizen from Holland, uh, and I lost my ordinary but beautiful only child, Elsie, 17 years old, in the crash. She was going on holiday with her mum, my ex-wife, and her stepfather and stepdaughter on that day in July. And from that moment on, my life has changed. All our lives have changed, uh, but we still live. That's the strange thing sometimes. Uh, just after the crash, I wrote a letter to uh, some uh, of the people involved in those countries. You wrote, you wrote my letter, you uh, read, read my letter, Putin and Poroshenko and separatists, in which I thank them for ruining my daughter's life and my life. And I asked them if they could look into the mirror again, to, uh, if they could uh, do this. And uh, without thinking of this problem, they they, uh, they did because their father and mothers too, those people, and uh, yeah, of course, I did got a lot of reactions from all of, over the world, including San Marino, uh, but not from the guys themselves, of course, because that annoys me so much because for Russia, nothing happened. We didn't, we were not in Eastern Ukraine. We have nothing to do with MH17, so we can't, we were there, there, so we didn't do anything. And that's why the investigation being team till the day, today is doing such a difficult job to investigate all this. And I think one day truth will prevail. The truth will always prevail over evil. That's my opinion and my hope the future and it's an honor for me and I think for all of us to be here amongst politicians amongst NGOs that can hear our voice because we are at only a small voice Europe has a bigger voice I know a lot of Europeans not every time they agree on everything but I think on this thing you can agree that's in mass murder 
on just civilians. Every one of you, I think you are international people, just traveling the world, traveling Europe. You step into a plane without even thinking. Yeah, you think, do I have enough room for my feet or do I have something nice to eat? But you never think, I'm shot out of the sky and one second later, all my human rights, rights have disappeared. This morning we visited the Commissioner of Human Rights. I think, yeah. She said also, I will put it on the agenda and I will help you in, uh, in putting it on the agenda because it sometimes look, looks, it's only a Dutch thing and a Dutch investigation. But human rights and justice is not only Dutch, it's for the whole world. And the whole world can't accept this, I think, in Europe especially. I'm proud to be a European and I wait for the Europeans to stand up because now you hear, now and then, uh, countries in Europe, now let's lift the sanctions against Russia, let's start talking again. Talking is always better than fighting. And I'm the first one to agree on this. But how can you talk to someone who has just killed your daughter and steps away without uh, acting as nothing has happened? You can never do that. And you must all know that you're not the politicians who decide, but you, can in you are influencers in this matter, in this uh, in, uh, matter of uh, international... Uh, first identification from my son Bryce was on the 10th of September, our wedding day. Bits and pieces came in and from Daisy it took until the 22nd of October that she was identified by a piece of her hip, totally burnt. And Bryce was identified by his right foot, totally burnt, not recognizable. this happen? Until the day of today, I cannot understand how and why this happened. Yes, Ukraine should have closed its airspace. And yes, Malaysian Airlines should have closed and should have chosen a safer airway. And IATA and ICAO should have advised not to fly over this area. But most of all, the book should never have been fired because Whoever decided to fire knew the airspace was not closed and knew a lot of civilian planes flew over this area. The book came from Russia. Russia provided the murder weapon. The GIT has proof for that. The lies from Russia, the fake news that the Russian media provides all the time, all the different theories they made up, they validated later. The veto you entered on. It all was very offensive to us as bereaved families. But in my opinion, it was also an indirect confession of guilt and their responsibility. And then we saw uh, Prime Minister Mahathir from Malaysia, who defends Russia. In my opinion, he's betraying his own people. He's doubting the GIT finance openly, while Malaysia is in the GIT. While the families in Malaysia made a statement that they fully support the GIT findings, they get no support from their own government anymore. And then there's the issue with the prisoners war between Russia and Ukraine. We all knew what know what happened if the people were there at the airport every time. We call it every coffin that came in that could be remains of our children. The first identification from my son Bryce was on the 10th of September, our wedding day. Bits and pieces came in, and from Daisy it took until the 22nd of October that she was identified by a piece of her hip, totally burnt. And Bryce was identified by his right foot totally burnt, 
not recognize the word. How could this happen? Until the day of today, I cannot understand how and why this happens. Yes, Ukraine should have closed its airspace. And yes, Malaysian Airlines should have closed and should have chosen a safer airway. And IATA and ICAO should have advised not to fly over this area. But most of all, the book should never have been fired because whomever decided to fire knew the airspace was not closed and knew a lot of civilian planes flew over this area. The book came from Russia. Russia provided the murder weapon. The GIT has proof for that. The lies from Russia, the fake news that the Russian media provides all the time, all the different theories they made up and validated later, the vetoed UN tribunal, it all was very offensive to us as bereaved families. But in my opinion, it was also an indirect confession of guilt and their responsibility. And then we saw uh, Prime Minister Mahathir from Malaysia, who defends Russia. In my opinion, he's betraying his own people. He's doubting the GIT finance openly, while Malaysia is in the GIT. While the families in Malaysia made a statement that they fully support the GIT findings, they get no support from their own government anymore. And then there's the issue with the prisoner swap between Russia and Ukraine. We all knew what ha know what happened with the key what happened. He knows everything. It was extra painful for us as families when President Trump and President Macron congratulated both countries with the prisoner exchange, not mentioning one word about the MH17. Russia and Ukraine have to arrest the suspects, Girkin, Dubinsky, Ulatov, and Khachenko, so they can stand to trial. The trial will start in March next year. Up till now, only the Netherlands and Australia have put state responsibility on Russia. It would be very good if all grieving nations should do the same. We need full support of the world. If we put the pressure on Russia together, we will get to know the truth. I call on President Putin to get us the truth and justice to be done for our children, for us as families, Families are sentenced to life. I hope the perpetrator will face the same someday. And don't forget, this can still happen again. God forbid it will. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Dear um, Selena, House, and Claudio, and uh, MP, Peter, and all of you who are attending this meeting. I'm very honored that the Norwegian Helsinki Committee and myself are taking part in arranging this event. When we were invited to do so, we did not need a lot of time to accept. It is significant that this event takes place in the framework of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe which is one of the most important organizations for democracy, human rights, and rural law in Europe. And it's now celebrating its seventh anniversary. At the same time as the Russian Federation has somewhat controversially returned to the Parliamentary Assembly after being away since its annexation of Crimea and warfare in eastern Ukraine started in 2014, the Assembly now seems determined to contribute to truth and justice for the MH7 victims. 
I think uh, that by appointing a rapporteur, the assembly is signaling that truth and justice in this case, case remains important. It is underlining that endeavors to find truth and, just, and ensure justice for the crime of downing a civilian airplane, killing 298 innocent people, should not fade away as time passes. According to its funding treaty, any European state may become a member of the Council of Europe as far as it accepts the principles of the rule of law and of the enjoyment by all persons within its jurisdiction of human rights and fundamental freedoms. Of course, we cannot change the past. We cannot undo the crime. But what we can do is to deal with those responsible for the crime and those affected by it in ways that is in accordance with Council of principles of rule of law and human rights. Thanks to thorough investigation conducted by the Joint Investigation Team uh, led by the Netherlands, the Dutch Safety Board and some others, we now know a lot about what happened. The truth is emerging. The MH17 was hit by a Buk missile, missile transported from Kursk in Russia, from Russia's 53rd anti-aircraft missile brigade to a site controlled by Ukrainian rebels. We know that. The missile was directed at the airplane even though the airplane was traveling at regulated height and course. We also know that the Netherlands and Australia have stated that they hold Russia responsible for its part in downing the flight, asking for dialogue with Russia and with a potential of legal actions even in the European Court of Human Rights, the Netherlands can issue an interstate complaint. The DIT thinks it has compelling evidence that four named persons were involved in committing the crime. However, it has indicated that there were many more, up to 100, involved. Investigations are ongoing and trials will start 9 March next year at the Justice Complex Shippo, with or without the suspects present. The four named suspects, three of whom are Russian citizens, include well-known fighters, some of whom we were active in previous conflicts with great abuses. Igor Girkin, or Strelkov, as he is known, fought in the wars in Chechnya, in Transnistria and in the Bosnian War during the 1990s. Russian media, a Russian mis missile manufacturer and official Russian spokespersons have all presented a series of untrue theories of the reasons for the MRH-17 crash, including that Ukrainian fighter jets were shooting at the airplane or that Ukrainian missiles brought the airplane down. No. I think we can say there has been a Russian campaign for creating confusion about what happened. Neglecting Russia's obligation to cooperate with the international investigation. Russia was, in fact, voting in favor of the 2014 Security Council resolution that called on all UN member states to provide any requested assistance to civil to civil and criminal investigations. This is all to say that the search for MH17 truth and justice is important for several reasons. First and foremost, for those directly affected, those who are suffering for the loss of their family members or friends. Secondly, in a wider sense, in the fight against impunity for gruesome crimes, committed in the context of conflicts and repression in the post-Soviet space. While peaceful protesters end up serving long prison sentences in Russia, those responsible for war crimes or for the killings of human rights defenders and journalists or civilians go unpunished. 
Thirdly, also in a wider sense, in that it shows how deeply involved Russia was in supporting rebels in the Eastern Ukraine. And finally, in order to strengthen rule of law and thereby supporting the Council of Europe in its efforts to strengthen a fragile legal order in Europe. We have seen the same patterns of confusing the truth from Russian authorities in other cases, such as the well-known Magnitsky case, in narratives related to the Chechen wars and the wars in Georgia, and in several murder cases of human rights defenders, journalists, and whistleblowers. The remedy is not to give up the search and indeed continue the fight for justice and truth together. We also need to support and cooperate with those inside Russia who fight for truth and justice. In the Helsinki Committee, we used to call them the other Russia. Together with them, we have created and invested millions of Norwegian kroner in creating a documentation center related to war crimes and human rights abuses in Chechnya and other parts of North Caucasus. We hope to help build and strengthen the movement for accountability and intolerance against abuses inside Russia and creating more pressure against abuses from the outside. We can never be sure to win but without trying and fighting, we're sure to lose. I want to thank you for your perseverance and resoluteness in keeping searches, searching for truth and justice. And I hope that many organizations will join in in supporting your search for truth and justice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at you, but he wants to ask any questions. So, uh, can you please give your name and what you are before you most questions? My name is uh, Alexei Konradov. I am from Russian Federation. Я буду говорить на русском и попрошу своего коллегу перевести то, что я буду говорить. I will speak in Russian and I will ask my colleague to translate. Thank you very much. Уважаемый господин председатель, уважаемые коллеги, рассчитывая на равноправный диалог, искренность суждений и беспристрастность результатов расследования, я считаю необходимым сегодня участвовать в нашем совместном заседании. I count on equal dialogue and unbiased results of investigation, and thus I uh, take it very important to participate in this meeting. Для Российской Федерации крайне важно, чтобы те процессы, которые происходят вокруг нашей страны, носили конструктивный характер и беспристрастный суждение. For the Russian Federation, it is very important that uh, the processes uh, which occur around our country uh, are unbased and uh, fair. Uh, uh, thus, the uh, politicized accusations uh, before the uh, end of the investigation of the crash of MH17 uh, resembles, resembles the case of uh, Stripals. Опять до завершения следствия и без предоставления заслуживающих доверия доказательств заявляется, что Хайлер Лайкер – это Россия. Again, before the investigation is finished and before uh, proofs are presented, it is declared that it is highly likely that it is Russia. Видимо, такая линия становится своеобразным трендом в международных отношениях. Все это очень прискорбно. It appears that such a line is a, a usual trend in the national relations, and it is very unfortunate. Наши отношения к, траги к трагедии 
спустя пять лет не изменилось. Мы возмущены этим ужасным происшествием и глубоко скорбим о жертвах и сочувствуем родным людям. Our attitude towards the tragedy is unchanged. Uh, we are outraged about this tragedy and uh, we are uh, sorry for the victims. Российская сторона настаивает на проведении заслуживающего доверия расследования. The Russian Federation demands an investigation which deserves trust. Как и все присутствующие, российская сторона считает, что истинные виновные за него должны быть определены на основе достоверных доказательств и привлечены к ответственности. The Russian Federation, as all in this call, thinks that those are really responsible for this crime should be prosecuted. Поскольку голландская сторона поднимает вопрос на дипломатическом уровне, где предполагается профессиональный диалог, давайте разберемся с фактами. У нас много вопросов касательно проводимого расследования. Хотелось бы получить на них ответ. We have a lot of questions concerning the investigation, and we would like to have answers. Первое. Россия стояла у истоков принятия резолюции 2160. Нас к деятельности совместной следственной группы, в отличие от Украины, не допустили. We were not accepted in the joint investigative group in reference to Ukraine. Это при том, что Украина нарушила международные правила и не закрыла воздушное пространство на территории, где проходили боевые действия. Почему реализован такой однобокий избирательный подход? Why it was a selective approach to this case? Второе. Российская сторона в октябре 2016 года предоставила следствию первичные данные с радаров, которые работали в Ростовской области в тот трагический день. The second, the Russian side provided the investigative team with the radar data in October 2016. This was the radar from the Rostov region. Любой специалист в этой области знает, что такие материалы невозможно подделать или изменить. Представленная нами информация полностью исключает возможность пуска сбившей боевых ракеты с территории под контролем ополчения. Boeing was done by a missile launched from the territory controlled by separatists in Donbas. Почему эта информация не приобщена к делу? Why this information isn't included in the materials of the case? Собирается ли голландская сторона дать нам официальный ответ по вопросу о первичной радарной информации? Is the Netherlands going to provide us with the answer to the question why this information wasn't included into the materials of the case. Третье. Почему украинская сторона не предоставила данные своего радарного наблюдения? Хотя известно, что на ее территории работали по меньшей мере три радарных установки. Third thing, why the Ukrainian side hasn't provided with the information from its radars. It is known that there were three radars which were functional at that moment in Ukraine. Где обещаны США снимки со спутников, о наличии которых Вашингтон заявил сразу после катастрофы? Where are the satellite pictures which were promised by the United States? who declared that they possessed them just after the crash. Четвертое. Обвинение России в том, что она не оказывала содействия расследованию, не выдерживает никакой критики. The fourth thing. Accusations against Russia that it is responsible for this tragedy withstand no critics. Обратимся к фактам. 
Let's take a look on the facts. В июле 2016 года голландские эксперты и исследователи посетили Москву и провели углубленные консультации с российскими экспертами. В июле 2016 Генеральная прокуратура России всегда оперативно и полно реагировала на поступающие запросы по оказанию правовой помощи. Uh, the Prosecutor's General Office of the Russian Federation uh, has always uh, responded to the request for the uh, legal assistance. The requests on the Hollandian side were rejected and the necessary documents for technical and constructive data of the rocket system BOM. The request of the Hollandian side, uh, the data on uh, technical characteristics of the missile BOM were provided to the Hollandian side. Предоставлены результаты натурного эксперимента, выполненного производителем этого типа ракет концерна Алмаз-Антей. Uh, uh, Алмаз well. Почему эти материалы были проигнорированы в финальном докладе Совета по вопросам безопасности Нидерландов о технических, о технических крушениях войны? А сам он изобиловал нестыковками и неточностями. По какой причине совместная следственная группа на пресс-конференции ничего не сказала об оказанной нами помощи в расследовании? Um, uh, finish this course, and <coughs> I was asking uh, you to ask a question or to put forward a question to this panel. Uh, this is not the official representation of the Dutch government. Uh, I will. I see that the Dutch ambassador also would like to ask a question a second, and it would have, be helpful. I will let you talk because I value that you engage. But could you please um, ask a question or um, finish your statement? I give you twenty more seconds. Насколько, по вашему мнению, существует вероятность беспристрастного э, расследования и участия в этом расследовании российских следователей и прокуроров? Do you want to, is the question to me or to any of those who would you like to uh, put questions? Do you want to, to the, or shall I first give the word to the Dutch ambassador and then I'll also give you an answer? So I'll first give the word to the Dutch ambassador and then I'll answer. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a question to you. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, um, Mr. Monte. Um First of all, I should like to extend my gratitude to the uh, family members of the victims for having come to, to Strasbourg and having um, shared their story with us. Um, uh, secondly, I wish to apologize for being here only very briefly. Uh, the timing is, 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 is difficult and I will have to leave immediately after my short, my very short intervention. Uh, that's, the second, that's the second point. My third point, thank you to you, Peter, for organizing this side event. And my final point, um, even though I do not consider this the right venue for um, um, having an um, intergovernmental uh, dialogue between the two member states, uh, I, I cannot conceal that it is uh, distressing time uh, after time to hear from the Russian government the, uh, the way they point in the direction they uh, try to uh, degradate the joint investigation team, which is a team of very serious lawyers and investigators uh, working from the Netherlands together with our partners. And uh, they, I can assure you, are completely uh, independent. 
and uh, we fully rely on the results of their work and I would simply call on the Russian Federation uh, to do the same, not always to, as a first reflex, to question everything that is being put forward. Uh, the joint investigation team has no interest whatsoever in producing false material or, or uh, untrue, uh, untrue material. Um, they are a serious uh, investigation team and we must rely on them. Uh, with this, I'm really sorry that I have to leave, uh, but once again, thank you very much. Thank you for coming here. Uh, I wish you a fruitful continuation. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I would like to. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, you know, the, uh, the Excellency from the Russian Federation here, uh, if if what you say is true, <coughs> if what you say is true about all the Russian intentions to help, to participate in investigations, to get a biased, you know, uh, process, why did Russia veto? The United Nations uh, International uh, Investigation. Изначально в том процессе, как был выставлен процесс поиска и сбора доказательств, у российской стороны возникали вопросы. Например. Обнаруженной малайской следовательской группой э, черные ящики на территории подконтрольного ополчения были подвержены попыткам изъятия американской разведки. И когда украинская сторона основывалась на заявлениях расследования неизвестных блогеров, и это ставилось как основная деятельность группы, у нашей стороны возникало, возникало э, и сомнения, и неуверенность в том, что расследование идет в нужном направлении. Поэтому действия нашей стороны были обречены на подобные шаги в рамках выстраивания профессионального подхода. Uh, we had questions, for instance, we had questions why the US intelligence sought to uh, uh, get uh, the black boxes of the plane uh, and uh, why the investigation was based on the uh, data from uh, some bloggers. Uh, that is why uh, we uh, had such an approach. Мы по-прежнему считаем, что российская сторона может участвовать в профессиональном расследовании и профессионально помочь найти виновных в этом преступлении. We still think that Russian sides can uh, participate in a professional investigation and uh, professionally find uh, those responsible for this crime. Поэтому мы еще раз настаиваем на совместном участии в этом процессе. Thus, we again insist on joint participation in this process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you, you, you asked me a question. Um, uh, Russia only handed over part of the radar data in October 2016 to start up with. The plane was down in July 2014, so that was two years and three months later. By that time, the ICAO investigation had finished, and the Rostock radar data still has not been handed over to the investigator. So if you call that full cooperation, I have a slightly different definition of full cooperation. Secondly, it was brought to the UN Security Council to have an international tribunal by the UN Security Council. Russia had the veto, Russia used it. <coughs> so if you say there has been an international proposal which would include Russia, that would have been a proposal which would have included everyone. I must say there is something which hurts me a little bit. This event was not organized by me. It was organized to give a voice to these families who've been waiting for the truth for more than five years. And they feel a game has been played with them. And I understand why people came in late here today, because Mr. Macron had only 20 minutes and used more than an hour time. But I did miss Mr. Kongaritev, just two words. Two words, these families, 
If anyone is not guilty, you know it's these families. We're sure of that. And I had expected you to start off at least with that, to keep that decency. And I'm looking forward to the continued interest of the Russian uh, delegation here in the MH17 uh, review. And I do value having an exchange of views. But because this is for these victims, I would like to take a few other questions of people who are present here. Is there anyone else? Unfortunately, I got to go because I got a shuffle to the hall for the 70th. So I must go. But I, I'm sorry. I just want to say, I've got no question for them. I just want to say thank you for the braveness you, you shown. It was, I'm very touched by the story. So I want to say thank you. I'll do my best. Uh, sorry? Your name. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm Marco Nicolini from the small republic of San Marino. Uh, so as as a politician, I'm not very powerful. <laughs> my, my country is very small, but we got one vote. Uh, so I'll do my best. I already talked about, because I read your letter uh, about about Ezenik, if I'm wrong. And I already talked to my parliament. I carry on from my small uh, country. I'll send a letter to Mr. Putin and to Yesterday I talked in the hemicycle about the, they need peace in Kiev, they need peace in that countries, those countries. I, I'll, I'll do my best and maybe something will be, no, no, nothing will happen, but if we put some, some little break on one on each other, on another, maybe we'll do <coughs> something. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I think we are we are coming close to the end of the meeting, but there is a very obvious solution to the uh, speech uh, of the representative of the Russian Federation. Yes, uh, Russia should make sure of those being indicted, showing up in the trial. Then they can put forward all the evidence. Then we will know. Thank you. I'd like to add something to that. Um, those four people are suspects. They're not convicted yet. So if Russia arrests them because there is an international search warrant for them and take care of that they uh, uh, attend the yeah, sorry, trial in one way or another, then Russia can come with its own lawyers and prove their innocence, if they're innocent, or guilt, if they're guilty. <coughs> May the truth prevail. Hey, I want to answer your question. Thank you, I would like to respond to your questions. You know, the corona, uh, мыслительного процесса и рассуждений о этих четырех персонах пока на сегодняшний день ни убедительных доказательств по частности этих людей, ни какие-то серьезные следственные материалы в соответствующие суды не направлены. И кроме заявления, что мы должны их арестовать, я задам вам вопрос о главенстве права, на основании чего мы должны их арестовать. Представьте, материалы мы их арестуем. Представьте материалы, мы передадим это в суд, и суд решит, арестовать их или нет, привлечь их или нет. Но пока мы ничего, кроме домыслов и голословных обвинений, не видим. Что касается международного расследования, я вам напомню, ни одного специального брифинга в Совете Безопасности ООН до сих пор не произошло. Как только произошла эта чудовищная трагедия, первое, что сделали украинцы, Порошенко – с какими-то простреленными металлическими частями выступал в Совете Безопасности ООН и заявлял о причастности России на основании чего. Мы готовы помогать, мы готовы следовать духу права и верховенству закона. Мы испытываем самые, самые теплые чувства, которые можно только выразить в соболезновании 
в семью пострадавших. Но у меня вопрос, почему малайская сторона до сих пор не признает до конца те результаты, которые озвучивает голландская сторона. Мы не вмешиваемся в процесс. Мы готовы помочь. Пожалуйста, ответьте мне на этот вопрос. Thank you. You asked questions. I was hoping for a few answers, quite frankly, also from your side. So I will give some answers. And I must say, I you missed once again an opportunity to say these two words to these people who, whatever story you think is true, are not guilty, but have loved has lost their loved ones and been waiting for five years. In Russia, actually, there was not only a briefing in the UN Security Council, there was a proposal for an international tribunal in July 2015. And that has been vetoed by the Russian Federation, which has a veto uh, within the Security Council. So if your point is, was there no, was there no attempt of having a solution which used the UN as we think is the um, does have the natural authority and would have, in my eyes, been the preferred solution. That yes, there would have been. And I keep saying to you, we can all look at other countries. We investigated as Dutch parliamentarians also the failures of KLM and the Dutch authorities. Why did we let our planes fly up there? I'm hoping that Russia will do the same. And we'll wonder why the investigation is still waiting for the radar data from Rostov. And Rostov radar data are crucial in figuring out what, what has been going on. And if you don't trust, if you didn't give them to the JIT, you didn't let anyone else analyze them either for five years, that would have been at least one show, and it didn't happen. And right now, I only see ways of delaying and delaying and delaying. And I really hope <clears throat> that this investigation, which is going to take place here, which is not a judicial investigation, because that's not something the Accounts of Europe can do, will shed some light in the way counties are cooperating, are cooperating in this, and um, uh, we can see that. You're asking the floor again, I, I understand, and yet again, I would like to finish this uh, conversation. Um, I'm still here, I'm, I'm missing them, Marcon, don't worry. Anyone can ask me questions for another hour, that's no problem, because I'm not uh, dying, I'm not trying to uh, look for way, but I really, really want to thank the panelists, because um, I know, well, I don't know because I can't know, the emotional strain and costs of losing your child or losing your partner and um, uh, getting them back in such a state and for five years, and not being a trial, even of the suspects. And remember, a trial is there when there is enough prima facie evidence. It's not when there is total and full proof. That's exactly what's supposed to happen in the trial. And I hope that all the countries, Russia, Ukraine, close to the Netherlands, are cooperating to get the trial going, to get some of the truth out. Thank you very much for your interest and for still here. And I hope you will also take a little bit of account of the emotions of the family members here. <laughs>